Hey everybody, it's me, Rylan. It's Friday, March 4th, 2021 at 5.36 p.m. And it has been a long time since I've made a video. Um, this is my first video of like 2022, so hello to you. Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Rylan. I go by they, them, their pronouns. I live in New York City. I identify as gender fluid and I work in the mental health field. So this video is important to me because as I say in every video I ever make I feel like is I've been wanting to talk about this and I have and now I'm finally doing it. So this has to do with the um, matter of content warnings and trigger warnings. So TW for trigger warning or CW for content warning. And what these are are simply messages at the beginning of like maybe like a movie or a TV program, I would say movie, like if it's on a streaming network, um, that gives the viewer uh, a warning basically that the show might contain specific elements that perhaps certain demographics of people that have experienced certain events um, distressing. So a lot of times we'll be watching like a true crime show, right? And I'll say like, this scene contains reenactments and might be disturbing to some viewers viewer discretion advised or some shows might be more explicit about what is in the show um so i'm gonna trigger warning this like in my comments of the things that i'm going to list off a common thing that might be listed is like nudity or um sometimes the word like sexual assault or rape will be included in the trigger warning or self-harm I'd say that those are like the main three is usually things that have to do with like sexual trauma and non-consensual sexual acts. Um, CSA stands for childhood sexual abuse. Um, that's another really big thing. Uh, and the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I just got into a heated debate with my partner about this yesterday and I've had discussions with people about this in the past. And I think there's three schools of thoughts on should trigger warnings be mandatory or be included when it comes to like media. I think the schools of thoughts are yes, absolutely necessary. They should be included. Two, no, I don't want to put that in there because it's like going to ruin the show for me and I want to be surprised. And three, the people that are going to call everyone else snowflakes and say that people are sensitive. Given my life experience and the things that I have experienced as a human being in my years on this earth, I have experienced a lot of traumatic events, whether they be overt sexual assaults in my adult life or other things that have happened when I was younger, or other things that have happened middle age. I've had sexual abuse, I've had emotional abuse, I have um, PTSD because some of the things that I've witnessed. So I am a person that is susceptible to certain things, especially of sexual nature. So especially when it comes to the topic of childhood sexual abuse, which I think it's explanatory in that word of like what it means without giving details away. And I'm not even going to name the show because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I have a favorite TV show. It's fantastic. It ended like a year and a half ago. The final season of the show, we find out that the main character of the show had been whatever word you want to use. I'm not a fan of using the M word because it makes me uncomfortable, but had been blank by their father or their father was a blank that starts with a p i had no idea that this was the big plot twist that like actually like centered around the entire show and like what made this character who they were so when the fourth season comes around i'm excited it's like this series finale and then we get dropped with this bomb that the reason this person is the way that they are is because they were a victim to incest of their father. I wish I could tell you how fucked up the initial reveal of that episode made me. I was not okay in any type of way. If anybody is familiar with the concept of dissociation, which I have videos about that on my channel, 
I was extremely dissociated and I was really um, just not okay for like a couple days. And as the season continued, I want to say there was maybe only like eight episodes. It started to get more and more overt. Now, luckily in this show, they didn't show any of the acts being done because then I would have just like not watched it at all. But there are movies where like we see things happening to either children or there are overt rape scenes. I am very sensitive to those things. So when I saw this show, I was really upset because I felt it was the network's duty to have put some type of warning at the top of the show that says like, viewer discretion advised or content warning or whatever um, CSA is mentioned in this episode, then I could have made the decision whether or not I was ready to watch that episode at that moment in my life, whether I was ready to watch it ever at all, or if I was ready to watch it w within that hour and I could have waited a day to prepare myself. But instead... We get hit with this and then it continues throughout the episodes. It's still my favorite show. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't watched the fourth season yet because even though I know what's coming, I'm not ready to experience that again. So that's my experience. Now, my partner, on the other hand, they say they don't want to know. And they have experience with having trauma in their lives that... That's all I'm going to say. It's not my story to tell that they also have trauma. And they said they gave the example of the 2019 movie Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. He has episodes of psychosis and he also self harms in the movie. He hits himself repeatedly in the head on a telephone booth like window and ends up like hitting his head open. That's another common trigger warning is self harm. That's important to put out there. I know the TV show, um, 13 Reasons Why. I don't remember what the what they did wrong. It's I I don't know. It's either they didn't put trigger warnings that there was rape in it and also self-harm. I think that was it, is that they like didn't tell anyone and a lot of people just were not okay. So that was what 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 my partner said is I didn't want to have that warning at the beginning of the movie and then basically be playing who done it the whole time and being like is this the scene where something is going to happen is this it well I you know like trying to guess when is something going to happen and I totally agree that is a valid thing because yeah I would be guessing too I'd be like oh this is the scene that like something bad is going to happen to somebody but I also think that the networks and higher ups, um, even though people might combat me and say, oh, it's all about money. What does it matter? I think it's important for people's safety that they be warned and be given the autonomy about whether or not to engage and proceed with a show, movie, whatever that has um, potentially activating content for some of its viewers. Because believe it or not, PTSD is extremely common it's not just for people who have served in the military a lot of ptsd is a result of sexual assault so while the statistics are one in four that's a great number of people that have had something non-consensual happen to them so i feel that I should have been warned that that was going to be the context because csa is a very personal and sensitive topic for me. Um, and like I said, I'm not even going to entertain the people that are going to tell me that everyone's being sensitive because that's bullshit. It's rude and it's invalidating. Yippee. Hooray. Congratulations and cookies for you. If you've never had to experience any type of trauma or any of your family members, like genuinely happy for you because I don't want you to have to lead the type of life that people in my life have as a result of things that have happened to them. But I don't think this is a thing where you can pull people are being too sensitive. If something extreme like that has happened to you, you should be able to know about it and you have the discretion. Something personally that I will disclose is 
it bothers me that as a human being, because of the things that I've encountered, I need to make sure and screen the material that I'm going to watch to make sure that it doesn't have certain things in it. And I'm a person who likes true crime stuff, but there are certain things that I'm not equipped to deal with. Um, and I just can't watch. And it sucks. This isn't a poor me, but that's a really shitty way to have to like go through life when I just want to watch a movie and not know like is a dead body going to be shown in a scene. I don't like that I have to go to like a certain website to figure that out. So that's my opinion that it is for the greater good. Um, I remember my partner suggested maybe putting like a trigger warning in the synopsis of a TV show. Um, but who the fuck reads those in the first place? Um, so I don't think that that would be effective at all. So I see both sides of it. They're both valid. I get it. You want to have the suspense and learn, but I also think you need to keep people safe and make sure that that that's that that's it that people are being safe because if you're aiming to entertain people um i just would hope that your audience is okay enjoying the content that you put out so that's me i might get some backlash from this uh and that's fine just be respectful, please, if you do decide to write in the comments, because like I said, everybody has their own lived experience. Nobody's does the same. Um, and I think we need to be respectful of that. And that's why this issue is really important to me. So I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for coming to my TED talk that this fucking turned into. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye.